All right, in this video, I want to show you a few theorems that are useful when you want to find a zero of a function or see if the, uh, a factor such as x minus 3 is a factor of the polynomial. So let's, let's do what, it's at, what it asks. It has a polynomial here, a function that's a polynomial. We have to do, uh, evaluate f of 3. So you could do this on your own if you want to pause the video, but uh, we'll do it all together. So that's 27 times 2 is 54 minus 12 plus 7, and that gives me 49. Okay, so far nothing to note. But now we're going to divide this polynomial by x minus 3. So we put the 3 in the box. That's the 0 associated with that factor. And I'm going to write out my coefficients. There's no x squared term, so i got to put a 0. So when I do this division, multiply, add, multiply, add, right? Uh, nope, multiply too soon. Add, so 18, add, you get 14, and you get 42, you add, you get 49. And remember, that box there is our remainder when we divide. And so... So it shouldn't take you too long to notice that there's something interesting going on, and that is when I plug in the zero of a, of a certain factor, if I plug it into the, into the function, I get what the remainder would be is I, if I did synthetic division or division uh, on the factor itself. And that's called the remainder theorem. So if f of x is divided by x minus a, the remainder is equal to f of a. That's the remainder theorem. So it's a quick way, you know, sometimes a quicker way to find out what the remainder would be if you were to, if you were to do the division. And sometimes that's useful because if you don't want to, you know, a granted synthetic division doesn't take too long. But if you want to see if something is a factor or uh, a number is a zero, sometimes it's quicker just to plug in, plug it into the function rather than do the synthetic division out. So let's look at an example here. Find the remainder when f of x is divided by x equals 2. So there are two choices, but if we use the remainder theorem, you can just plug in the 0 associated with x minus 2. So the 0 associated with that is 2. So this is 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 9, and we get 8 minus 12 plus 8 minus 9, and that equals, uh, this is negative 4, plus 8 is 4, minus 9 is negative 5. Okay, so that's the remainder. Just by plugging in the 2, we get the remainder. We could also do synthetic division, and you could look at the box. Uh, in practice, you do whatever is quickest for you. The factor theorem is nothing more, it says nothing more than, um, if, if you plug in, if I plugged in 2, for instance, here, and I got 0 as a remainder, then that means that x minus 2 divides this, which you already know. I mean, if you do the synthetic division and the remainder is 0, then you know that it's a factor. Um, but the factor theorem just says um, if our function is divided by uh, x minus a and the remainder is 0, uh, then x minus a is a factor of f of x, and f of a is equal to 0, of course. f of a, remember, this gives the remainder. When you plug in a, it gives you the remainder. Uh, so if it's 0, clearly, it, um, if it's 0, then clearly a is a 0. And x minus a is a factor. So straighten out that terminology, right? a is the 0 of the polynomial, and x minus a is the factor of the polynomial associated with that 0. Let's do one other example. Is x, is x plus 2 a factor of x cubed plus 5x squared minus 12x minus 36? Notice this is asking something. It's a yes or no question. Is x plus 2 a factor? We could do the division out. We could do synthetic division. But we could also just plug in negative 2 and see if we get 0 out. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Uh, 
Now again, if we get zero, it is a factor. Uh, and if we don't, it's not. It's pretty, it's as simple as that. Okay, and this is negative eight um, plus 20 plus 24 minus 36. And this here is 44 minus 8, which is 36. So the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Now what I'm about to do, we don't have to do, but once you realize it is a factor, um, in, in terms of big picture, we're going to want to factor, we want to factor this. So in terms of big picture, what you would do at this point in a problem, if it was required, if you were asked to factor it, is you do the synthetic division and it helps you factor. So but so I know this is going to be a zero here already. Thirty-six. Right? And so now I can I can go ahead and start factoring because this tell this all tells me that x cubed plus 5x squared minus 12x minus 36 equals x plus 2 times x squared plus 3x minus 18. And now this can now this we can factor ourselves. If you gotta go up here, this now equals x plus two. And this I think factors nicely. And a six and a three plus and a minus. There we go. And so look, we just factored that whole polynomial without using a calculator, right? So this theorem kind of helped get the ball rolling. But again, you could also get the remainder, figure out it's a factor just by doing synthetic division. But in terms of big picture, these theorems help to, to factor, uh, to start factoring polynomials.